Doing a lot of great work on matrices recently. Uh, and we've learned a lot and a lot of cool stuff. Now let's dial it back a little, let that kind of soak in and gel and go back to a problem that we've had for a while now. If you guys have been tooling around with the source code that I've posted on GitHub, link in the description, you may have noticed, and by the way, you should be doing that because it's a great way to learn. You may have noticed that we've had problems where our, our laser beam that we fire doesn't connect with the floor. It goes right through it. We, it connects with these little boxes we have sitting around everywhere, but it doesn't connect with the floor. And that is a problem that we are going to solve this time we're going to do a line plane intersection. The line we're talking about is the little laser beam that we fired out and the plane is the floor. This is a 2D view so the plane is, it looks like a line but it's flat. We're looking from the side and the plane is the floor. So let's see, what's the information we have? Uh, we know what this point is. That's the point that the laser starts from. I'm going to call that X naught. And we're trying to find, and we have, sorry, we have the uh, path that the laser is traveling along. We'll call that vector V. And then we have this plane. And a plane can be defined with a normal, a normal vector, and some point, C, some point in the plane. That is enough data to define the plane. And so we're going to say the normal vector is that right there. There's the normal vector. And we'll call this point over here point C. It can be any point in the plane, uh, but I'm going to choose this point, <clears throat> point C. Now we're going to use this. Oh, and uh, here's what we're looking for, point I. I is the intersection point. And so we need to develop this line plane intersection algorithm using this information. And we don't want to just develop it. We want to develop it the fastest way possible. That is, that is the least computationally expensive way possible because uh, we want to save all the processor cycles that we can so that we can render other cool stuff with our game, keep the frame rate high, all that jazz. So we're going we're gonna to find a very, very efficient line plane intersection algorithm. So here's how we start. We're going to start by projecting things onto the normal. This is the no I drew it off the normal off to the side here, but if I draw it right under, right under my x naught point, pointing directly up at the x naught point, then I can start projecting vectors onto my normal. Okay, and why are we doing this? Hold your pants, I'll show you. We'll get to that. So we're going to project the vector v onto the normal vector. And we'll get this vector, I'll call it, I'll write it right here, v prime. Okay, so this is the normal vector. It goes straight up from here just like this. And our v vector gets projected onto it. So we get a vector that's completely perpendicular to the plane. It forms a 90 degree angle this V prime vector does with the plane. And then you see we have this um, another vector, I'm going to call it W, let's pick another color here, and it goes from X naught to C. I'm going to call this vector W. Okay, We're going to project that onto the plane as well and we'll get, oops, we'll get this vector right here. It goes all the way from x naught to the plane. I'm not going to draw this part because that's covered up by v prime, but this will be w prime. So w gets projected onto the normal, and we get w prime, and v gets projected onto the normal, and we get v prime. And now you'll notice that we have similar triangles. We have a we have a big triangle and a small triangle. I'll see if I can shade them in for you. Here is, I'm going to shade it in yellow, here's the big triangle. This entire area. And then we have only the small triangle, which is just this part. Just this part. Just this part right here. And the cool thing about similar triangles is that 
they, they have proportional sides to each other, right? So if I take, if I take this vector v, okay, and I want to scale it to make vector, I'm sorry, this is v prime. If I take this vector v prime and I want to scale it to make vector w prime, then I have to scale it by some, some scalar number k, right? I, I make it maybe looks like two or three times bigger in order to get w prime. And similarly, if I have v and I want to get this entire vector right here, which I'm going to call the question mark vector, okay, then I have to take v and scale it by the same number k to get the question mark vector. So the ratio from v prime to w prime is going to be the same as the ratio from v to our question mark vector. And that's good news because x naught plus the question mark vector is going to equal i. It's going to equal i. If we start with x naught and we add our question mark vector, that's going to equal i. And so we know what we know what the question mark vector is, right? It's k times v. It's k times v. So let's substitute that. A different color here. We say x naught plus k times v. That will give us i. And uh, all I did is I substituted this question mark for that one. I put this k v here. And so if we can figure out what k is then we'll be good to go. So let's go back and review. Let's actually do our projections and find out the ratio between this and that. Uh, v naught prime, if you're a little scratchy on projections, here's a link to the video where I covered projections. Our formula for that is going to be v dot n over n dot n times the vector v. And then for w prime, oh, this has a v prime right here. That shouldn't be there. For w prime, okay, it's going to be w dot n over n dot n times n. And you know what? I messed this completely up. This should be an n. So these are my two equations for projections. And so we know what v prime is, we know what w prime is. And so I'm going to solve this equation for k by dividing both sides by v prime. Okay, and I'm going to get, I'm going to write it down here. I'm going to get these two cancel out. I'm going to get k equals w prime over v prime. So let's write that. W prime, that'll be. W, w prime is w dot n over n dot n times n over v dot n over n dot n times n. That equals k. And look at that, a bunch of this stuff cancels out. These two n's are in the numerator and the denominator, so they're going to cancel out. And then these n dot n down here is going to cancel out. And so I can simplify that by just writing w dot n over v dot n. And that'll give us k. So now let's take k and substitute it back into our equation right here. And we'll get x naught plus w dot n over n dot n times v equals our intersection point i. And we're done. Let's go to the code and make our lasers hit our floors. So if you remember from the inner, the box, line box intersection video, uh, here we are in our trace line function. We got a bunch of line box intersections and then they calculate the intersections with all the other entities in the game. And I'm just gonna throw our line plane intersection right down here at the bottom. And then let's go look in the implementation of that function. This is gonna be super quick guys. Remember how I said we wanted this to be uh, fast, and it's going to be super fast. It's going to take not even half as long 
to actually implement the function as we did to figure it out. So here we go. The intersection is just x naught plus k times v. Those are our two equations that we worked out before, and there they are. Now, if you remember from the line box intersection video, we need to figure out this fraction so we can tell uh, how, how far through our trace we actually hit the plane. And, well, it's easy, it's just k. And then we have to return this Boolean that says whether or not we actually hit the plane. Because if our, if our line segment is facing away from the plane, then k will be zero. So we want k to be greater than or equal to zero. And if our line segment is facing towards the plane, but the plane is too far away, then k will be bigger than one. So we want k to be less than or equal to one. That's it, F5, let's do this. So here we go, we're in the game, and let's see if it works, and it works beautifully. Looks like we're hitting the floor exactly where we should be. So, next few videos, we're gonna be doing a little bit of housekeeping, because we spent so long with matrices, and we, don't, we, didn't, we didn't even have simple stuff like shooting the floor. So we're gonna be spending a few videos catching up on stuff like that. We're gonna be doing a, a little view frustum culling and uh, entity lists, and it's gonna be really great. I'll see you then.